Central Ann, and welcome to another episode of Women's Wellness That Works. We create a welcoming, safe, and comfortable space where women can share her story to inspire and empower others in their health, happiness, and well-being. I was introduced to our next guest by a mutual friend. It is rare for me to meet a woman who I refer to as Superwoman until I met Fior Melissa Johnson. Her name alone is as special as she is. She was born in the Dominican Republic and moved to America at the age of five years old. She is from New York City and has remarkable drive and positive energy. She serves others in her community by working in the state regulatory agency, supervising proprietary schools in New York City. With a master's in mental health, her passion and joy is developing people in their highest possible self. She believes everyone has a contribution in this world and is valuable. I am overjoyed to have her with us today. Welcome, Fear Melissa. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. So share with me where your name came about, because it's such a unique and unusual name. So tell me where Fear Melissa came about. I don't think my parents ever, you know, researched the history, but Fior comes from the word Fiore in Italian, mm. and it means flower. Beautiful. And Melissa means honeybee. Um, so I guess that, I guess it matches. Absolutely. So you're from New York City. Yes. I'm from New York City, um, Elmont, New York. Um, I recently moved there about a year ago, mm -hmm. um, so I'm very excited, my new home there. Yeah, so share with me, you have such an amazing full life and a busy, busy uh, woman, but a mom as well. So you have one son. I have one son, Brandon. Yes. He's 17 years old, handful, but wonderful young man. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And tell me what, um, what are your responsibilities like in your community? Who do you serve? Exactly. So currently I work for the State Department of Education, Bureau mm -hmm. of Proprietary School Supervision, BPSS, and our role is to secure students' financial interests. Mm -hmm. um, we oversee proprietary schools. These are trade schools throughout New York State. We have about four, 400 schools. Um, and so our job is to you know, make sure that students are learning exactly what they're what they pay for exactly and so that keeps you busy but you also have a master's in mental health so share with me this is I believe that you know when we first spoke on the phone it was like your passion and your energy just was amazing and overwhelming which I love so tell me about that exactly so I'm a mental health counselor um, and so from the regulatory hat, I take off as soon as I get home and I start, you know, providing therapy. I, I have several clients um, Monday through Thursday, so it's a busy schedule for me. But it's a wonderful um, to be able to help people, you know, mm -hmm. obtain their full potential and make sure that they, um, that they know that they're valuable. And I think that's important. It is. And that's what's so amazing about you. When I, when I first spoke to you, you said everyone has a contribution on this earth. Everyone has a purpose to be here, and you hold people at their highest self. So mm -hmm. tell me more about that. And where I, does that drive come from? I don't know, but I have it, and I'm just thankful for it. But um, I think so often we're told that we can't do something, that uh, we're this or we're that, and you know, taking the time to get to know people. And I always tell my clients, you're resilient. They're mm -hmm. like, no, but I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm here with you. So, yeah. But I'm like, guess what? You've been alive all this time. Um, so that means that you have some resiliency in you. And so my goal is to extract that and let them know based on their experiences and the things that we learned that I teach them, and, but we yeah. also learn together um, that they are great, that they have something to contribute. Yes. And it seems to, to help people. And so as a counselor, especially during this time, during the lockdown, the pandemic, what have you noticed about people who have come to you? What type of um, help or services have you been providing? Right, so definitely during COVID, COVID did a number on all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, my colleagues in you know, the counseling field were overbooked. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> because, and I'm talking about children, yeah. young adults and adults and older adults. Um, we've all been cooped up at home, 
not socializing as much, um, sometimes overeating mm -hmm. and eating through our feelings as well. Yeah. And so, um, you know, providing a lot of CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. I'm a fan of solution focus and narrative therapy. I'm, I have probably like 20 journals myself. Um, and so just providing uh, people the skills that they need in order to cope. Um, one of my favorite things is what I call the comfort bag. And so I have my clients create um, kind of like a composite of the things that bring them joy. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be, you know, candles, it could be their favorite book, it could be a picture, it could be poetry. Right. And so developing coping skills to make sure that they're sustained. Yes, and that is so important, especially now, since we are somewhat even in, in isolation mm -hmm. still, and, and people are living in some fear. Is that correct? Absolute fear. Um, I, although I work Monday through Thursday, I still get text messages all around the day, seven days a week. Um, but I, I do that. You know, I, I try to support my clients as much mm -hmm. as possible. But at the same time, I want to make sure that they, they're able to sustain themselves. Correct. So we work individually in creating yeah. those coping skills that are applicable to them. Mm -hmm. Not everything, you know, it's not a cookie cutter for everybody. Right. You know, that's why, you know, therapy is individualized. Mm -hmm. And so um, there's fear of isolation. There's fear. There's dating, the dating world. Um, yeah, how does somebody date nowadays with, <laughs> with COVID? Apps. And, there's so yeah. many. I can't even tell <laughs> you all the names. It's exactly what most people are doing exactly. anyways. Right. Um, so there's so many apps. Um, I can't even think of some of the names, but it seems to, to help people. And I encourage them to, of course, socialize any way possible. Zoom, FaceTime, therapy is actually being conducted through a virtual, you know, telemental health, either phone yes. or um, video. And that really is an amazing tool that we've, you know, all been accustomed to, right? Because we are now in the digital age. So everything that we do is, is on Zoom and uh, digital media as far as uh, consultation and therapy and telemedicine. So that does help uh, in the long run, especially in the future. We don't know where this is going to lead us. So tell me, who have been your female inspirations? Because you're such a powerful woman and you, have, you, you do so much for so many people. But who has inspired you growing up? Yeah, I thought about this question long and hard, and I kept thinking uh, of all the women that I've met, just the moms that wake up early in the morning to get their children ready for school, sometimes one or two jobs, um, getting their families ready and, you know, planning trips and just organizing, being the boss of the family. Mm -hmm. And I think that women, women yeah. really, just the women in my life, you know, that have contributed to my growth. Absolutely. And so your inspirations have definitely made you the product of who you are today. Exactly. So what are maybe three things that you love about yourself? I love my drive. I don't know where it comes from. Sometimes it's I run. It's got to be that Dominican Republic. I think so, right? I think so. I think so. That um, Latina in you. Yeah. I, I also, one of the things that I love is my humanitarianism. Mm. You know, for about seven years, I volunteered at a children's ministry where we yes. teach music, um, uh, we empower, you know, parents to, you know, develop uh, great parenting skills. Mm -hmm. um, we coach the kids, their sports, um, they're called powerhouse kids in, oh, in Queens, beautiful. where, where mm -hmm. I lived though for a long time. And so my humanitarianism, I think that that's, that's one yeah, thing so that I love. your drive, your humanitarianism humanitarianism and what else what's one more thing that you love about yourself? I think my um there's this hustling attitude in me of that course. I can't shake You're from New York City right and so it, it just it it flows and and I love it because it 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 keeps me going, yeah. you know, and keeps me moving to the next project, the next opportunity. Right, and so that's another question. When is next for Fee or Melissa? Yeah, so sadly, I am leaving the Bureau of Proprietary School Supervision to another opportunity in Albany um, where I'll be um, managing um, capital projects, making sure mm. for, for public schools, these are mm -hmm. K-12 schools, mm -hmm. making sure that um, these building projects are properly managed. Um, and of course, hopefully in the future, some political aspirations because I just love helping my community. And That's amazing. I think uh, I've already done it. So yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna definitely look out and tune in to you for the next two years or so. But yes, I'm excited. 
about that. What, so as a busy woman, you know, and a mom, um, and you serve your community and you serve others, where do you find time for yourself? How do you find time for your self-care? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, sometimes I just have to turn everything off, yeah. you know, and just be present. Um, the weekends, you know, the weekends are mine, that's for sure. Um, but I also have my own comfort bag, you know, mm. I make sure that I pamper myself. Um, love my candles, love my, uh, some TV shows, you know, I don't get yeah. to watch too much TV, so that's always fun. Yes, and you are beautiful. Thank you. So, is there anything that you do spe especially for you, for your health and for spirituality? Absolutely. And... Well, I, I do a lot of narrative therapy, so I journal a lot, and I always start every entry with, um, you know, thank you, God, for my blessings yes. and those yet to come. Yes. And I always, um, I just feel blessed that, you know, just this, this is an opportunity, and just the next, and. I'm so hopeful for, for everything. Another thing that I absolutely love that I have not done is my bubble bath. Mm. I just, I'm dying to, Definitely. I love to my do bubble that bath. really soon. Yes. You do? I do. In fact, I use a lot of essential oils in, okay. my, in my, my bubble bath and baths in general. But it's, it's for me, it's about releasing and exactly. letting go, right? The day. Exactly. So definitely, as women, as busy women, mm -hmm. we um, get to do more of that and letting go and releasing, you know, and not holding on. Exactly. Right? No, it's very important to center. And the only way that I can produce and, and help my clients is if I'm well myself. Yes. And so that's so important. Good. So I'm going to ask you um, a few more questions. Um, questions. In one word, answer this question. My purpose is? To serve. Mm. And age is? Endless. Mm. And health means? Peace. Peace. Yeah, and peace means? Stability. Beautiful. And being a woman is? Powerful. Powerful, absolutely. And with that, I am so honored and grateful that you are here today at Women's Wellness That Works. Continue to be of service to others. And I know that your story and who you are will impact millions and millions of people in the world. So I appreciate you for you. being here. Thank you so much. And we look forward um, to see you in the political arena. Thank you so much. So thank you for watching another episode of Women's Wellness That Works. We'll see you again. To your health.